Buongiorno! Hey, welcome to another exciting action-packed adventure of Tony Zapponi's Sunday Shave. Today is uh, kind of a special shave. Today is my uh, grandson's first birthday, so I'd like to wish a happy birthday to uh, Vincenzo Miguel. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to try to keep today's shave as Italian as possible. Now, I went out yesterday with the female of the species and I shaved yesterday late afternoon. So today I don't even have a full day's worth of growth here. Um, but we are going to a brunch today, so I'm going to do a little cleanup shave. Um, I may do one pass in a cleanup. Not sure which direction I'm going to do. I'll feel it out once I get lathered. Um, that is the beauty of wet shaving. You can completely tailor it to what you need. If you shave in the morning, have a business meeting, whatever you have to do, you know, if you go home in the afternoon, evening, you have a dinner, you can do a quick cleanup pass and boom, you're done. Um, depends on how your beard grows, um, how fast it is. <clears throat> I've got one of those beards where by five o'clock I need to shave. Um, so again, you custom tailor it to you. Today we are going to be shaving with a fatigue Piccolo. This is an Italian made, I believe they're made in Florence, Italy. Um, Fatip is a Italian manufacturer. I believe they started making razors in 1950. Uh, around 1980 or so they come out with the open, open head. Um, there are some advantages to the open head which we'll talk about in a little bit, but getting into this razor, uh, this is one of those razors where you either love it or you hate it. It does get some mixed reviews on the internet. Um, <clears throat> Talk a little bit about the construction of this. Uh, Fatigue produces three different double-edged razors, the Grande, the Retro, and the Piccolo, which we'll be using today. Um, the heads on these are made out of solid brass. Um, the handles are brass also. Um, they do have a pretty good nickel plating on these things. They weigh in at about 2.4 ounces, which is average for a double-edged razor, but because this is such a small little thing, it just feels real real solid, real real meaty. Um, I like the razor, been using it for quite a while. Um, there are two different versions of this though, from what I understand, um, around 2016, just recently, the uh, Fatip changed the head design a little bit. Um, there's a version one and then the version two. Version one, the blade exposure, which is the distance or the amount of blade that is exposed between the outer edge of this uh, this top piece. This is a three-piece razor. Um, they reduced that. Uh, version one, you had 0 0.08 <clears throat> inch of a blade exposure, and in 2016, they reduced it to 0 0.05. So it was a pretty significant amount of blade reduction, um, blade sticking out. Now you can get these razors anywhere from $25 to $35, and for that price, I, I think it's a really it's a really good bargain. Um, but again, in terms of bargains, I mean, you buy the razor one time, and then it's yours for the rest of your life. Uh, so if you spend a little bit more for a razor, you have it forever. I mean, this is the kind of razor that will literally last last a lifetime. Um, this will be handed down to your kids, or it'll be at your estate sale, but this razor is going to live longer than you will. Um, this is definitely going to outlast me, uh, especially with the number of double-edged razors that I do have. Um, I'm not going to wear this thing out anytime soon. Um, Fatip had some problems, which I believe they have remedied. Um, as far as blade alignment went, what happens is you have these posts that uh, are welded down to the underside of the top plate of the razor. Um, from what I understand in the past, some of the welds would not enable you to get the blade to seat on there right. And what would happen is the blade would end up shifting or cocking between the two, uh, between the two plates. So when I put my blade on, and then I put my bottom piece over this, and I screw it on, again, you gotta be real careful not to, uh, not to cut yourself. I always, 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 always make sure that my blade is aligned 
you, know, you can kind of slide it around under there a little bit um, but you don't want the blade to be heavier on one side than the other you want to make sure that the blade and all the other edges are nice and parallel I do snug this one up a little bit more than usual um, that's exactly what you want right there okay now um, for today's uh, shave cream shave soap we're going to be using Porasso. This was probably the first soap that I have ever used, and it has been in my rotation ever since. Um, it is a staple for wet shaving. If you are just getting into um, wet shaving, this is the soap that you want to get. You can pick up a five ounce, a little, little more than five ounce of a tub. Uh, for like 10 bucks, so it's about two dollars an ounce. Um, you can get cheaper stuff out there But this stuff rocks this stuff really awesome. It lathers up nicely. It is considered a soap It's not a particularly firm soap um, But it's it's not really a, a crope it, it, it's you, you can take your finger and dent it in a little bit So what we are gonna do here? Um, we're gonna wet the face be using since this is an Italian shave this is my favorite brush in the whole world this is my Razorock this is a synthetic brush this is the ply soft please soft whatever they call it um, I'm gonna lather up I tend to knock out more water in the brush because I don't, I don't like all that foamy stuff all over the place I like to keep as much of it in the tub I always do this upside down so that any lather goes into the brush and also so that you don't get any water between the puck and the inside of the container I had an issue with a soap that I had used a while back where water got in that void um, when you looked at it the puck looked like it had dried out I left it out for a considerable amount of time and I hadn't used the soap in a while and what ended up happening was the soap had dried out like any soap will do and when I went to use it the next time, the puck fell out of the container. Um, I had all kind of mold and nasty stuff underneath there, and I ended up pitching it. Um, so it's always a good thing to avoid. So I always load up the brush with the container upside down so I don't get any water in there in the first place. And I have never had that problem since. This is real nice to build up a lather. It has an amazing smell. It has uh, a menthol to it. It's just a nice, rich, creamy shave. It builds up real nice, real thick. I love the smell of it. It just opens everything up. I love that. But it's not too much menthol. It's not like you're shaving with a candy cane or anything like that. It's a nice cooling lather. particularly like to use this in the summer when you have hot weather up here in Northeast Ohio. razor like all razors very light pressure let the razor do the work I'm going with the grain always keep the skin tight
The open head design, even though it's a little more of an aggressive head, um, the nice thing about it is that it enables you to keep the shaving cream on the face right up until the blade cuts the whisker off. With a traditional double-edged razor, your bar, your safety bar, scrapes off a good portion of that soap before your blade even gets to it. With this, with that open comb design, the soap or cream stays on your face. It goes in between those little combs. And you'll find I'm going to show you here on this pass when I do the pass instead of lifting the razor I'm just going to double it back I'm going to keep it on my face and you will see how more lather actually stays on the surface of your face Now, when I do this, the blade has actually scraped that soap off my face, which you want. Now, when I do this, and I come back, you see those lines right there? What happens is the soap goes in between those combs, and it stays on until the blade cuts it off, which sounds, sounds like it works, and it feels like it works. And if it sounds like it works, and it feels like it works, it works. I like this soap. Parasso soap will be in my rotation forever. Um, it's great soap. Okay, we're going to end up doing a third pass here. I'm going to see here in a second. pull the soap out and do a cleanup. Um, like I said, I just shaved yesterday. Um, I really just want to clean this up. Everybody's got their own unique to them spots. Underneath my jawline here, hair grows in all different directions. It just kind of goes crazy there. So when I do my cleanup pass, I have to make sure that I, I get that. I kind of have to feel around. You get to know your face after a while. Okay. is today's Sunday shave. We use the Fatip Piccolo and we use
use the Proresso. This is the menthol shaving soap. Um, again, if you are brand spanking new to wet shaving and you want to get into it, um, I would not recommend an open comb razor. You might want to start with any one of the other milder, um, a Gillette style, um, even some of the ones that are adjustable that expose your gap and your, your blade exposure and your angle. Um, you maybe start with one of those, put it on the mild setting, um, keep everything where it belongs. Um, no slicing various things off. Um, you can, like I said, this is about $2 an ounce, so it's pretty inexpensive to get into. Um, and you can make a determination if uh, you know, wet shaving is, is your thing. Um, it likely will be. Um, like I said, it's very, very enjoyable. Um, it's relaxing. Um, good times. All right, that is today's Tony Saponi's Sunday Shave. You guys have an epic rest of the weekend. See you soon.